Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more it's Leo speaking. Today I'm going to show you a, an alternative way to create drum patterns inside Scalar 2. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. So we are inside AUM. Let's click and create a MIDI channel and also an audio channel. Let's select for an audio channel um, Hammerhead as a drum machine, which is a fantastic program. Uh, let's disable the autoplay like so, and let's turn down a little bit the volume as well. Next, we are going to search for Scalar 2, the Scalar Control 2 instance, and uh, one for the kick uh, drum sound, one um, for the snare sound, like so, and a third one, which we are going to use for the hi-hat. Okay, let's link all of them, like so. Okay, let's open up the first instance of Scalar 2. And um, let's get to work. So the reason that I'm going to show you an alternative way to create drum patterns using Scalar 2 is because in the previous tutorial, I showed you how you can uh, create one note code, which triggers Hammerhead, and then I position for each effectively drum sound which I'm trying to I was trying to uh, trigger in um, a position each chord with that sound in each slot and there are eight per pattern and then I use the pad views to create multiple patterns. The problem with that approach which works uh, um, well is that you have only up to a maximum of eight slots per pattern and you have only up to seven patterns which is not that great if you want to create a long composition. So what are the alternative ways? Well, another alternative way is to actually use arpeggios. The trick with using arpeggio is that you need to create the um, right uh, uh, notes in the chord, which are triggered, triggered in the right sequence by the arpeggio um, inside Scalar 2. So how do we do that? Let's, uh, first of all, let's go and change the chord duration. And... Um, you can do it in a different way, but for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm going to use four bits as a code duration. Then I'm going to click here on the plus sign to edit a code, and I'm going to select C1, which will give me that kick drum sound, and also B note, or B1. The B1 note will not trigger any sound, but that is fundamental. Now, let's uh, enable the looping view, go to the sequencer, and then... Um, Expand the uh, playback performances, click on global, create a new group, select arpeggio, and then inside that, um, make sure that you have arpeggio, pattern up, and then one eighth. And now let's click play. So as you can see, uh, the arpeggio is playing up, C1 and B. C1 so will produce that kick drum sound. B will produce nothing because they are both notes of duration one eighth. So um, you will hear only C1 for two, one, uh, two one eighth, which makes uh, um, one bit in the four bits for the chord duration. And then those are repeated, which works uh, quite nicely. So let's go back, go back to the sequencer and let's duplicate these pattern. Like so. Perfect. Now let's go to the second instance or scalar control 2, and let's add uh, another chord. This time, we are going to start with a note, which doesn't produce a sound, and then we are going to follow with a snare sound, which is roughly here. Perfect, so let's go back to the sequencer. Now, let's expand the playback performances, create a new group, select arpeggio. Now, if I leave it to one eighth, let's listen to what happens. So it will play straight away after the kick drum sound. I don't want to do that. I want um, for uh, the snare drum to uh, start working on the second kick drum. So I'm going to select as timing one fourth, which means it will go into the second. Okay, so uh, let's click play. So hopefully that makes sense. These two notes are actually played uh, 
uh, with an upper page, but they are one quarter. So um, while the kick drum uh, sound is one eighth, so you'll have two one eighth playing when only the B here, the snare, will be played, which will be no sound the first time. So you'll have a kick drum of one eighth, then um, another B note of one eighth from the first instance of scalar control two, and then when the snare um, plays here as a second one quarter note, it will be on the third one eighth note from the kick drum sound. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Let's go back to the sequencer now and let's create a different code because I want to create a variation. This one is going to be a little bit more complicated. So we're going to choose a B note and G note, which will not produce any sound. And I will be setting the arpeggio this time on one eighth, which means there will be one quarter bit, which will not produce any sound. Then the snare, tune, um, to, so the snare of one eighth plus another B of one eighth, which will not produce any sound. And then I will go down to the B, to, sorry, to the D note, which will produce a snare um, drum sound. Now let's go back to the sequencer. Let's create a group two, again, arpeggio. This time we choose one eighth, and then as a pattern, we're going to, to choose down up. Now let's edit that chord again. And let's see what happens as uh, I actually play. Okay, and um, let's uh, uh, go back to the sequencer here and, and let's start again. Oops, I should have uh, actually changed the uh, chord duration to four beats as well. So let's try again and let's edit that code and now will work. So hopefully it makes sense of what is happening. This time the notes duration are one eighth. So we'll play the first two, which will produce no sound. Then the next one, which will be a snare sound together with the next one, which will make the next one quarter bit. And then it will play again the snare down here on the D. Then it will go up again. And then it will play the snare again uh, as one eighth, and which will give you the illusion that it's playing twice or in succession the snare drum sound, which is what we wanted. And of course, if you understand how that works now to create. Uh, for example, hi-hat is pretty straightforward. So we create another chord, and then we choose the hi-hat, um, and then we just create um, a simple chord. And um, actually, um, let's go back to the chord, and we are going to uh, choose two hi-hat, like so. We go to the sequencer and choose the right uh, arpeggio, like so. And now let's play. I enable now the looping. And of course, I could also change the duration here. I could um, uh, scroll down, why not, and go to 1 16th, and let's click play. And uh, even more, you could edit that code now and uh, change even the velocity, right? So you could actually say that this one, we're going to set it very low as velocity and this one very uh, uh, ups to maximum or roughly maximum. Okay, sequencer and let's click play. Okay, hopefully it makes sense. This is another way on how you can create uh, drum patterns using arpeggio inside Skeletu. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Bye.